Hey there. So here's a, just a quick tutorial of the simple knot that we did in our wall hangings. This is one of the samples. Um, I'll show this knot here in a second. That's the same knot we used the whole length. Um, just attach the wire that it kind of could dangle or it can come up and it can hook up on, up on there. Um, this can be any kind of like bobble or anything that's attached to the wire. We added little tassels. We added little wires with beads later. What we started with was determining the length of the, or the, the stick and the natural curve of the stick. In this case, it felt better to hang it with the curve going down. Um, so then we took the yarn and we wrapped the stick with yarn first. This helps a little bit with um, grip and it just makes the stick really pretty. And it gives them the opportunity, it gives kids the opportunity to use both hands for turning and wrapping, which is a completely different um, skill set than when they're knotting. And that wrapping skill is really important because it uses both sides of the body. So that's why we did that. And then um, the hanger can have beads on it or no beads. It can be whatever way you want to be. Um, and that's the beauty of this. It, it really gets to be personal. So I'm going to put this aside real quick here. And oh, and you can actually dangle beads from some of your yarn pieces and stuff too. Um, we put a little pipe cleaner. We braided it part way and then put a little pipe cleaner. If you have something that's a braid, you can put a bead and then unravel the bottom so it has a little um, little fluff at the bottom. And here's another one with some beads. Real fun. They get to choose. And um, even the order of everything, the color of everything, the texture, um, the length of the yarn. You don't have to stick with the length of yarn that came in the kit, but, um, but uh, make it up as you go. So let me put this aside. And we're going to take this stick here. It's a nice big one. And which way do I hang this stick? Uh, not quite sure, but it seems to want to roll down rather than stay up. If I hung it up, it would probably dangle because the way to tell is to hold the center and see if, if it is equal. And then to get it to be equal, <laughs> this skill will come in handy when I give you mobile um, kits, is... Um, to hold it like that and to see where the middle kind of is. So what we're gonna do for this one, we're gonna flip it and it'll still make it look super cool. And then I have a little piece of yarn here. I want you to just knot the end. That's where the grown up comes in. The grown up can help with the knots until they learn how to knot. Um, three to five year olds learn to knot all the time. It's just a matter of practicing and kind of their determination is one of the skills that they kind of pick up easiest if they're really determined to do it. So then it's just a matter of wrapping this, and there's many different ways to do this. This is where I like the kids to kind of work it out because my stick is really big and to keep it on camera, I'm not turning it and flipping it, but you can turn it up and down and you can go around like this, okay? And so they'll work that out. That's a really good uh, motor skill that they need to have. So I'm gonna cut mine off real quick here just so I can show you the other knot. And I would wrap the whole thing, and you can wrap it in whatever colors. You can change the colors as you go. And my pink one, you can see there's three different colors on there, mostly because the smaller the yarn, the less color coverage you get, unless you put bigger yarn on. So one of the things that came in your kit is this, and it's a little bit like, um, oh, it, it, it's gonna shred. It, it is kind of yarn, but it, it's also like the stuff you use for needle felting, but it's, it's not wool. Um, and that word is escaping me in the moment. But anyway, um, when you do this, just be careful not to pull too hard, you'll shred it. So this one is one that's really great for um, learning how to be gentle about it um, because it's not necessary to be um, rough. Okay, so I think because of my white table, I'll start with a different color. Start with this blue one. And whatever length that I determine that it's going to be, I'm going to take the yarn and I'm going to take it and put it mostly in half. In this case, because the ends are uneven, it doesn't really matter. But I want this little piece right here to be um, the halfway point. And I'm going to put that and lay it under my stick. Sticks on the table. And then let's slide it over here so you can see it. And then I'm going to take and make a swimming pool. And then I'm going to take the two ends of my yarn, in this case I have more than two ends, but I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna hold them together. So you can see this here. Okay, here's my two ends. I'm gonna put them together and they're feet. Pretend these are two different legs. 
and their feet. And I'm gonna take those feet and I'm gonna go over the stick and jump into the swimming pool. And then I'm going to pull up. And that makes my slip knot. So let's do that again. Use this pretty gold. I think you actually have this one in your kit. Okay, so two ends, pretty equal. I lay it down under the stick, the middle part. I take that, I make a swimming pool. I take my two ends and I jump the feet over the stick and into the swimming pool. You could also use lake if you wanted to because that's really fun. You guys have that ability to swim in the lakes around there. So once again, we're gonna bend it in half, lay it down under the stick. This stick is handy because it has a curve and so it stays up. If they have to just pick up the stick and put it back down, easy enough. Swimming pool, two feet, jump in the swimming pool. Now, usually when I'm explaining this to kids, especially three-year-olds, now older kids, four and five-year-olds, it's easier um, for them to pick it up and just kind of run with it. Once they do it, they start talking and visiting with everybody because they already know how to do it, and so they're not even thinking about it anymore. Um, but the three-year-olds and stuff, you just take them through the process like five times. Make a swimming pool. Where's your feet? Take the feet, jump into the swimming pool. Now pull up, pull up, pull up. And you walk them through that and then they, they are able to do it. And that's the part that we like is when they are able to do something that normally a grown up would be like, oh, let me help you. I don't want it to be hard on you. We want them to challenge their bodies and we want them to use both sides of their, um, their hands and, and learn how to use their hands for torque and stuff. A lot of kids these days only use one hand at a time for things and so that's why we do that and then we then you're going to embellish with um your handle can go on at the end if you want you're going to embellish with your wires and stuff and your um found pieces and it's one of those things you can add to as you come across things too it's super cool 